2010, Germany, Hannah Bloom works in journalism and serves on the Ethics Committee. At a conference about stem cells, Hannah listens to a talk about new developments from a specialist named Adam. Hannah is skeptical about the research, especially when Adam explains that the female reproductive system is similar to a chimera, an organism that is genetically composed of dissimilar cells. Hannah has been living with a man named Simon for 20 years, who makes money by creating sculptures and various installations. Hannah and Simon are happy in their relationship and are not bothered by the lack of children or marriage certificate absence. This evening Simon is late at work and does not have time to go with Hannah to the theater, where she has already bought tickets. She is upset and does not want to go to the show alone, when suddenly she sees Adam, who smiles at her warmly. The seats are sold out, so Adam asks if Hannah can sell him one extra ticket. She offers to go to the theater together, since Simon will definitely not have time to join. Adam is an interesting man and a pleasant conversationalist, so he makes a good impression. Despite their disagreements in the field of science, the next day, Simon's mother, Hilda, comes to Hannah and Simon's home. She says that she has cancer and the degree of threat will be diagnosed by the best doctor in Europe. A few days later, Hilda learns about the severe stage of the disease and, suffering from pain, she takes an excessive dose of medicine, which leads to a coma. Simon spends a lot of time in his mother's room and decides to personally disconnect her from the life support apparatus. According to Simon, an unconscious person can continue to breathe and digest food. But in fact, he is a dead person. Simon is sure that his mother took a lot of medicine on purpose to stop her torment. Hilda leaves this world, and a depressed Simon returns home. On the way, he suddenly sees Hilda descending from the sky, who says goodbye to her son and flaps her wings to go to heaven. Later, Hannah is reporting near a small football field where she highlights the controversial idea of a scientist who assures the public that there is a lot of oil lying under the city center. The scientist does not see the value in historical buildings and cultural monuments that may be destroyed in search of oil. A ball flies towards Hannah and one of the players, whom Hannah recognizes as Adam, comes running after it. Hannah is fascinated by the versatility of his interests, and after the report she stays to watch Adam play. Simon arrives at the clinic, where he had previously left tests to check cancer cells. Nothing bothers him, but he decided to get checked only because the late Hilda found out about the disease too late. The doctor says that Simon has been diagnosed with cancer and requires urgent hospitalization to remove a testicle. Shocked, Simon can't get through to Hannah, because she put her phone on silent while she hangs out with Adam at the football game and later at the bar. Then, they order a taxi to different addresses, when suddenly Adam invites her to have a glass of wine at his home in the city center. While Simon is undergoing surgery, Hannah and Adam chat in his spacious apartment. Adam has a minimal number of things and furniture in the room, so Hannah concludes that the man is focused on more important things in his life. Hannah draws attention to Adam, but at the same time her conscience is tormenting her, and she plans to go home. Adam understands everything and does not insist on anything, so finally Hannah decides to leave, and then she makes love to Adam. In the morning, Hannah returns home and finds out where Simon spent the night and why he has not returned yet. Hannah arrives at the hospital and sees a pale Simon, who has already had his hair cut after the surgery. She asks Simon if she can get pregnant from him now when he has removed one testicle. Simon is a little surprised, because they haven't discussed this topic for a long time. He doesn't know, can he be a father, and says he needs to ask the doctor. Simon is discharged from the hospital and, together with Hannah, attends Hilda's funeral. Later, Simon and Hannah are having lunch in a street cafe, and he suddenly remembers that today is the 20th anniversary of their first kiss. Simon proposes getting married, and Hannah happily replies, well, let's go. Later, Simon comes to the pool and meets a man named Adam. They swim in a race, and Simon loses the competition. He tells Adam that the race was not entirely fair because he is not in the best shape after surgery on his scrotum. Later, Adam comes into the locker room and checks on Simon to see if he can show his the operated area. Simon laughs at the unusual request at first, but then takes off the towel. Adam slowly moves closer and closer to Simon, causing him to suddenly become aroused. Adam gives Simon a hand job and brings him to an orgasm. Adam says that it is not bad for half a portion, then says goodbye and leaves Simon to think. 
because he has always adhered to a traditional sexual orientation. In the morning, Adam greets his lab assistant, who is quit the bedroom. The guest offers to prepare tea, but Adam only smiles and wants to see his lover off as quickly as possible. After this, Adam goes to a choral singing lesson and attends a martial arts section, and in the evening he arrives at a house outside the city where his ex-wife and son live. Hannah and Simon do not tell each other about Adam, and he also does not suspect that they are a married couple. Hannah tells Simon she's on her way to work and later she heads off to the stadium where Adam plays football. He is not on the football field, and Hannah learns that Adam, in addition to other things, knows how to sail a yacht, because today he went sailing. Simon is also looking for a meeting with Adam, but in the evening he does not find him at the pool. The next day, Hannah meets Adam outside his laboratory and she offers to give her a tour. Examination of microscopes and stem cells turns into foreplay, when suddenly Adam's assistant enters the laboratory, so Hannah and Adam go to his house and make love there. In the evening, Adam arrives at the pool and meets Simon, who offers to go to the sauna. There, two men simultaneously benefit each other and experience pleasure. After the pool, they go to a bar, and Simon admits that he does not live alone. And before meeting Adam he had no sexual experience with men. Adam advises not to worry about this and just get out of the situation. Also, Adam suggests forgetting the deterministic understanding of biology. In other words, if semen is excited by men, it is not at all necessary to look for a cause and effect relationship or to label oneself with a precise definition. The guys go to Adam's apartment and make love. Returning home, Simon encounters Hannah and a strong surge of sexual desire makes the evening unforgettable for a married couple. They later make a statement and officially become a wife and a husband. Regardless of this, Simon and Hannah continue to meet with Adam, where they are charged with sexual power from him and then share it now within each other. Without even knowing it, Adam breathed a second life into a rather cool relationship. One day, a married couple attends an art exhibition, where they both suddenly notice Adam. Hannah and Simon run in different directions to hide from Adam before he notices them. Both of them are so scared that they do not notice each other's strange behavior. A few minutes later, they find each other and conclude that the exhibition is not so interesting anymore, so it's time to go home. Some time later, Hannah finds out that she is pregnant and goes to the clinic to ask the age of the fetus and thus understand who the father is. Later, Hannah interviews a psychology professor and asks how a person can recognize whether he is a leader or a follower. The psychologist believes that a person agrees to obey if these conditions help him survive. The person acts within the strict framework of established categories and cannot self-identify in a social environment without choosing his role. Hannah feels drawn to Adam because he is the enhancer and catalyst in her relationship with Simon. Right during the interview, Hannah barely holds back tears from the realization of the fact that she has long become a follower. In the evening, she comes to Adam and wants to talk, but he warns that he is not alone now. Hannah bursts into Adam's apartment and announces that she is pregnant, when suddenly Simon comes out of the bedroom. He asks what Hannah is doing here and hears the same question. Adam is no less surprised, because he sees that Simon and Hannah know each other. She is confused and does not want to find out anything, so she hurriedly goes down to the street. Simon quickly dresses and runs after her, leaving Adam alone and completely confused. Hannah goes home to her mother to recover from what happened, while Simon continues to wait for his wife in their apartment. The next day, Hannah goes to the clinic and learns the age of the fetus, 18 weeks. This fact does not answer Hannah's question about the possible father, because exactly 18 weeks ago, Simon underwent surgery. While Hannah had her first intimacy with Adam, she also learns that she is carrying twins and most likely from different parents. Adam comes to his family and confesses to his ex-wife that he has fallen in love with Hannah, but their relationship has collapsed. The ex-wife continues to drink tea and does not even fall off the chair because, apparently, such confessions of Adam have not surprised her for a long time. Adam is upset but no longer seeks meetings with the married couple because that evening he was the third one to whom no one could explain what was happening. 
Days pass, Simon misses Hannah and is the first to decide on a truce, so he sends her an invitation to the exhibition to her editorial office. There they meet and continue the evening at the bar, discussing what happened in Adam's apartment. Hannah admits that she misses Simon and her old life, and hears the same from him. They reconcile and it remains to be discussed what to do next with the catalyst, Adam and his effect on their family life. They admit to each other that Adam has become an integral part of their lives, and they both miss him very much. The two of them come to Adam. He opens the door and sees a married couple in front of him, whose joint appearance suggests that the conflict has been resolved. Adam is confused, but also friendly, so he happily invites guests to the house. The relationship between Adam and the married couple is moving to a new level because starting this evening, they will make love as a threesome. 